Hi, welcome to Inspired Sundays for the weekend of May 29th to 31st. You know, we at the Trilogy Foundation are so thankful to have you join us as we strive each week to find different speakers who can deliver a message of hope, love, and togetherness. And we've been honored to have such a diverse lineup of passionate folks full of faith giving us some of their time. You know, I'm not sure what kind of week you've had. I don't know what's on your mind or your heart. But I saw this quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I found it to be very powerful. So I wanted to share it with you. He said, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. And I think this quote ties quite nicely with this week's message brought to us by Rabbi Galia Rooks as she speaks to us of caring for each other in social solidarity. Hi, I'm Rabbi Galia Rooks from the Temple. This past Friday on the Jewish calendar was the Festival of Shavuot, or in English, the Feast of Weeks. It's called that because it comes on the day after seven weeks of seven days following Passover. Seven times seven is 49, so the next day, the 50th, is Shavuot. In Greek and on the Christian calendar, it's called Pentecost, penta meaning 50. According to Jewish tradition, this is historically the time when we received the Ten Commandments. Having just been redeemed from slavery, we made our way to the mountain of Sinai. There, the book of Exodus tells us, we all stood at the foot of the mountain for the quintessential ultimate experience of entering into the covenant, which distills our values, our commitment to God, and our responsibilities to one another. Each year between Passover and Shavuot, we know exactly how many days we will count and when we will arrive at Sinai, but this year, during the global pandemic, as everything takes on a new light, we can perhaps come closer, closer to experiencing the anxiety of our ancestors who left Egypt, not knowing how long it would take to reach Sinai or what would happen to them afterwards. We too are wandering in the unknown, unsure of what awaits us. We have no idea how long this time of uncertainty will last, longer already than most of us could ever have imagined. What will life be like after COVID-19? Will there even be an after COVID-19 until a safe vaccine can be found and widely distributed? How can we better adjust and help our families thrive even under the threat of this devastating disease? Like the Israelites, fearful in their unknown journey to an unknown promised land, there are those who long to return to the way things were before. But instead of a willingness to return to slavery, this time it would endanger the very lives of others, especially those most vulnerable among us. All across the globe, different religious communities are creating their own rules for enduring this seemingly interminable isolation. We can be proud when we see people who are determined to set the standard for the most careful and caring decisions about when and how to reopen and return to some sense of normalcy. While we all depend on having a healthy economy, we understand that this cannot be accomplished at the cost of human life. In Judaism, the saving of a soul, pikuach nefesh, is the most righteous of deeds. When lives are at stake, nothing is more important, and certainly not money. We are wandering in the wilderness, surrounded by fear and isolation. We see dangers all around and more challenges every day. As we continue into the unknown, let us be certain of one thing, caring for each other, supporting one another, and walking safely together is surely the way to a better world. As we think about Shavuot, Pentecost, and the revelation at Sinai, let us recommit to our highest ideals, for we know we are indeed stronger together. And while we are living in a critical time of social distancing, we need not be in a time of social isolation. 
We are physically separated, but we can have many social connections. You may be seeing this on your computer or smartphone, or even projected onto a TV. Let us give thanks that we are privileged to have this technology, which so many vulnerable people lack. Many of us have communication software, like Zoom or Skype, which provide us with opportunities for dates, meetings, check-ins, social hours, even dinner. Let us be grateful for these modern day miracles which allow us to meet. But what of those who are unable for various reasons to connect through technology? We can still reach out to them, especially with notes, cards, letters, and messages. messages. Once, not so long ago, there was an art to writing letters sharing poems, writing notes, and sending expressions of care and thoughtfulness have changed over the past years, but perhaps that only serves to make them more meaningful today. Sometimes we feel isolated and lonely, yet while we are still not able to embrace friends and loved ones, we are embraced by God's presence and sustaining love. While we cannot breathe on anyone, we know that God breathes life and hope into us. While we cannot physically comfort others, we know that God surrounds us eternally offering comfort. With these assurances, we know too that we share in God's redemptive work for us and all of creation. God's presence permeates the world and connects all living beings. Sometimes we feel isolated and lonely, but in truth, we are never separated, distanced, excluded, or removed from God's all-embracing healing and love. While we certainly wish we could meet in person, let us be grateful that we can help to flatten the curve and join together across great distances by making use of technology and sharing our virtual community in support. Let us nourish our hearts and sustain our souls during these unprecedented times. Like the ancient Israelites, around us is desert, isolation, and uncertainty. Ahead of us lies the unknown. But if we take care of one another, we can reach the promise of a better world. And so as we stand as one community at our own kind of life-changing Sinai experience, we commit to social solidarity in response to this necessary social distancing. To all the employees at Trilogy Health Services and their families, and to the seniors who are residents there, I appreciate all you are doing and will be doing to reach out and uplift others. And I thank you for this opportunity to share my thoughts with you today. I'll close by saying that I continue to pray for the health and safety of our entire community, especially those who are on the front lines taking care of us, doctors, nurses, and other health care, medical workers, those who are stocking the grocery stores and doing other essential jobs. May the God of all the universe bless the work of your hands and protect you. And for those of us who are doing our part by staying in, may our patience and commitment be counted for righteousness. With love and blessings to each of you, may the Holy One surround you and your loved ones and give you strength and comfort as we face the uncertainty of the times we are in. Let us all join hearts by rededicating ourselves to be the reason people believe in the goodness of other people. <clears throat> I'd now like to read a poem that was written in early March by Franciscan friar Richard Hendrick. Lockdown. Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But they say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. They say that after just a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and gray and clear. 
They say that in the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of family around them. They say that a hotel in the west of Ireland is offering free meals and delivery to the housebound. Today, a young woman I know is busy spreading flyers with her number through the neighborhood so that the elders may have someone to call on. Today, churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, the weary. All over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality, to how big we really are, to how little control we really have, to what really matters, to love. So we pray and we remember that yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is panic buying, but there does not have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, but there does not have to be the disease of the soul. Yes, there is even death, but there can always be a rebirth of love. Wake to the choices you make as to how to live now, today. Breathe. Listen, behind the factory noises of your panic, the birds are singing again. The sky is clearing. Spring is coming. And we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul. And though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, sing. And speaking of singing, my final offering today will be a song which is based on the Misha Berach, the traditional Jewish prayer for healing. This most famous version was adapted and set to music by my hero, the late, great Debbie Friedman. So Misha Berach is the name of the prayer, and it means, may the one who blessed, <clears throat> it's just the first few words of the prayer. And I think the only other Hebrew you need to know are the words rifua shlema, which means a complete healing. And that's, of course, what we pray for for everyone. Thanks to Rabbi Galia for her message of love and faithfulness. And thank you for that beautiful song. You know, we want to extend a special thanks to all of our wonderful residents. Thank you for being a part of the Trilogy family. We're so honored each day 
for your love and trust in us. And speaking of the caregivers at your campus, how amazing are they? I wanna thank these amazing campus employees as they continue to show the world what a servant's heart is really made of. And that's empathy, compassion, and love. Thank you for being awesome. And I'm personally gonna heed Rabbi Galia's words this week and find people to reach out to you and just connect with them, see how they're doing. Because caring for each other like God cares for us is something each of us can do to make this world a better place each and every day. Thank you for joining us for Inspired Sundays. Stay safe and healthy, and may God bless you and your family this week.